Hey guys, and welcome to Should You Buy It, where all we do is talk a little bit about the game and whether or not we think it's worth the cost. In this episode, we'll be playing Temtem, the turn-based 2v2 totally not Pokemon MMORPG game where you and up to one other friend can battle alongside each other to become the very best like no one ever was. The first question that we always cover in these videos is what stage of development is this game in? And in this case, Temtem is in early access and available on PC as well as PlayStation for $40. However, once this game does come out in full release, it is expected to be on Xbox and Switch as well. So what exactly is Temtem? Well, in Temtem, your goal isn't simply to catch every Temtem you come across, but to be the best trainer in all of the archipelago. In order to accomplish our goal of being the best Temtem trainer like no one else ever was, we are going to first have to understand the core gameplay mechanics that separate this game from other games of its genre. The first and most apparent difference in this game is definitely going to be the fact that you are always battling in a 2v2 match. This means it is two of your Temtems versus two of your opponent's Temtems. This creates a unique dynamic where you can constantly change out your Temtems in order to try to gain a type advantage. If you are not familiar with type advantages, a simple example would be that a water type attack will do double damage to a fire type Temtem. There are of course many other different dynamics as you can probably imagine, such as say buffing an ally or being able to hit more than one target with a single move. Now one of the more interesting things about Temtem, however, is that there is essentially no RNG. What this means is that there is no chance to miss an attack or get a lucky critical hit on your opponent. I know personally, one of the things I find most frustrating about other games in this genre is that if you have bad luck sometimes, you're still going to lose. This makes the Temtem PvP scene significantly more competitive as it's more about timing your switches and moves rather than just hoping for a lucky crit. Next up, let's talk about the core gameplay loop and the story of the game. Okay, so if you've ever played any of the old Pokemon games, excluding Pokemon Go and Pokemon Sword and Shield, then it's just that until the end game. So go ahead and skip to the time on the screen if you're not really interested in hearing about all that, but if you have not however played any of the old games, then here's a quick rundown of what you're going to be doing up until the end game. Okay, so the story starts out by you getting your first starter Temtem. You'll be given three choices between a fighting monkey, a shiny rock, and a floating alien. At the end of the day, I would say just pick whichever one sounds coolest to you. After that, you will have to travel from city to city to either find the Dojo Masters or to defeat whoever happens to be being evil in the area. There are some side quests of course, but most of these are silly one-offs like go find me this Temtem and bring it here and I'll give you some money or some items in exchange for it. As far as the main gameplay loop goes, you're going to encounter some strangers who want to battle you along your way to new locations, as well as encounter wild Temtems in the grassy areas that you will be forced to walk through. Yes, you can also find them in caves and on the water. Otherwise, you will fight these trainers in Temtem in order to either level up your current Temtem, catch new ones, or just try to get some money. Now that we have a basic understanding of the gameplay, what is the difficulty like? Well, the difficulty isn't too hard, but it will definitely require you to do some grinding in order to train your Temtems to take on the progressively increasing difficulty of enemies. The Dojo Masters, however, are a huge spike in difficulty compared to the previous random trainers you have fought along the way. So make sure you have a counter to their primary element type in order to save yourself a lot of pain. All right, so we can't really talk about an MMO without at least talking a little bit about the endgame content. Do keep in mind that everything we talk about here is in early access, so some of it is definitely unfinished at the time of recording this video. There are three main things, however, that make up the endgame, so let's go over them. First up is breeding and or buying and selling of Temtems. You see, in this game, your little friends can breed to create better versions of themselves. Without going too much in depth here, the way this works is if a Temtem say has a really good attack stat and another one has a really good defense stat, then you can have them breed together for a chance of one with both of those traits. The catch though is that each Temtem has a specific amount of times it's allowed to breed before it becomes sterile. That means in order to get a perfect Temtem, you're going to either need to do multiple attempts with multiple Temtems 
or you will have to buy one off the in-game Temtem market. We think this is going to be great as it will most likely create an in-game economy around the extreme difficulty that it takes to breed a perfect Temtem. Unfortunately, the trading house has not been implemented into the game yet, at least at the time of recording this video. But it is planned to come out when the game is in full release, so that is definitely something we're looking forward to. Next up is the PvP. You see, in Temtem, you can do competitive matches, which will give you a rating based on how well you do. Luckily, the system also currently scales your Temtem up or down to a specific level, as well as making all their stats perfect for the sake of the fight. This is great, as it makes it easier for new players to jump right in without having to spend tons of money and time to get perfect Temtems at max level. And finally, we have the chores. And what we mean by this is there is a bunch of errands or tasks for you to do every so often in order to give yourself some items. There are things like fishing contests, mini quests, delivering mail, refighting dojo leaders for extra rewards, etc, etc. These are all the daily chores you might find yourself doing in other MMOs, such as World of Warcraft or Black Desert Online. The only downside is that a lot of these chores are simply to earn money or to find a color variation of a specific Temtem. P.S. They also have added player housing if you're into that kind of a thing, but it's nothing really too special. It's basically just a room you own that you can decorate with furniture and other cosmetic items. There's no real gameplay value added aside from the decoration aspect. So now it's time for the pros and cons section for the video. First up for the pros is that they rid the game of pesky RNG during combat. There are no lucky crits or tragic misses, which make the game more skill-oriented and less about the roll of the dice. Next up for the pros is that you are able to play through the full game with a friend. This is great as one of the most disappointing things about this game genre is that they usually require you to play entirely solo, excluding maybe trading and PvP. After that is that the graphics are smooth but also exciting, the world felt nice to run around in, and the graphics during the battle scenes and especially the late game Temtem moves felt epic and visually pleasing. And lastly for the pros is that the music and soundtrack was well done and definitely added to the immersion within the game. To give you some examples, here is a quick clip to give you an idea of what we are talking about. Now for the cons. First up is that the game has a very limited in-game experience, excluding the PvP that is. For the most part, it's just random tasks such as refighting enhanced dojo masters or hunting shinies. This was disappointing to see as for an MMO, endgame content is probably one of the most important aspects you can have. Next up on the list is that quests were not super clear when they told you what to do or where to go as sometimes they would send you to places you had not yet discovered on the map and then they would not give you an icon showing you where that area was, unless of course you had already discovered it. We think this might be a bug, or it could be intentional, we're not entirely sure. Either way, they either need to give us a quest marker, or just not give us a quest marker when it comes to quests. After that is the fact that the devs do appear to be very strict. While we have not personally encountered this, there were many, many reports of people being banned for things such as maybe assuming gender or talking negatively about the game in chat. We understand that maintaining a healthy community is important, but this seems a bit over the top to us as there have been many numerous reports of this happening for a variety of different reasons. And just to clarify what we mean by this, we're not talking about a one or a two day ban because you did something wrong. We're talking about a perma ban for first time offenders for things that other games would maybe just give you a slap on the wrist. Finally, I don't know if you would count this as a con, but the story is basically the same as the original Pokemon games, but everyone just has a different name. You've got your Professor Oak type characters, you've got your Gary type characters, or blue or red, etc, etc. It's just the exact same storyline with a little tiny bitty twist here and there and some different names on them. So now it's time for the rating for the game, and when we rate games, we want to get one hour of enjoyment out of every one dollar that we spend on the game. So for this game in particular, in Temtem, we would want to get roughly 40 hours of enjoyment out of the $40 that we both spent. And after putting 24 played hours into this game, we give it 7 out of 10 potatoes. Yeah, Temtem was a good game. However, there is a major disclaimer that goes along with our rating. To put it simply, the devs are notorious for banning a lot of players and offering little to no help in determining why they were actually banned. In an MMO where hundreds or even sometimes thousands of hours of progression are at stake, this is quite a scary idea. 
The game itself was really solid, and we thoroughly enjoyed our time with it. And therefore, we think that as long as you're willing to accept the risks, it is honestly more than worth the cost. Before you guys go, we would like to mention that we do have a Discord channel listed on our description and in our channel page where we play games with people in our community. We always love hearing suggestions for new games to make videos on, so feel free to drop by and leave us a comment on what you would like to see next. As always, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe if you liked the video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.